Well, good morning. I thought I was going to get off the hook for offering, and I was starting to tug at the bow tie this morning, and <laughs> then Jenny nudged me and reminded me she'd gotten this one off of ties.com for three bucks. <laughs> so it's not worth it. I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, Jenny does love a bargain. Oh, well, I... Uh, Jim alluded a little earlier to the old days when he was, you know, younger and thinner. Um, I, there are not really many pictures to show you, so you'll have to take my word. But uh, when I was younger, I was about 100 pounds heavier. And uh, there's probably a reason why there aren't many photographs from those days. <laughs> this was when I was a pastor in Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, before I lost the weight and started running races and stuff. But anyway... Uh, the, <clears throat> uh, you know, being a pastor in Los Angeles meant having a lot of odd choices to make that uh, I don't face so much here in Indiana where people are normal and they do normal things. So it's, <laughs> I, I like it here. But I do remember one time I had a phone call. Uh, I was uh, one of the officers in the local civic association for Ladera Heights. Uh, Ladera Heights, uh, which is where my first church was at, is an African-American community very upscale, and, uh, you know, so I knew a lot of the people in the community, and Clarence calls me out of the blue. Now, Clarence is in his late 60s at that point. I, being in my uh, 20s, thought that was old, and now that I've, now that I've kind of turned over and I'm within hailing distance of his age, uh, you know, I know better. But Clarence had had a triple bypass uh, in a day when that was a rarity, and Clarence was reading the scripture at his home. He didn't go to any church at all. And he said, Frank, I was just reading the passage about the Ethiopian eunuch where this court official says, there is water here. What is stopping me from being baptized? And I couldn't think of a single reason. And I kind of knew this might be going somewhere. I said, really? Really? And he said, yeah, you have a baptistry. Can you baptize me right now? Well, well, I know that, you know, we've been taught in seminary, make sure you have a series of classes that the person really understands the commitment that they're making, you know, the old brethren thing, count well the cost and, and all that. Put on the brakes, slow down the ardor, and, uh, you know, make them think twice about it. But I'm, I, you know, he's got a biblical point. And I said, Clarence, I'll be glad to, but I have, you know, can you wait a day because, you know, I have to fill the tank. Then it takes about 12 to 14 hours to warm the water up. And he said, no, I can't wait. It, what, what, what if I die today and I wasn't baptized? Well, I, I said, fine. So I turned on the water, and it, of course it was freezing cold, and Clarence shows up, and I told him to wear some shorts, you know, or something to change into. I got all the towels I called the deacon to come over. Uh, I should have asked the deacon, do you know CPR? <laughs> and, you know, I climbed in first. And, and, you know, yeah, I only went up to here. But let me tell you. Well, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I did get my voice back eventually. And then Clarence walks in, and I'm thinking, Clarence is just getting over a triple bypass in an era before, you know, you got those like at Subway, and they'd punch your card, and the sixth uh, bypass was free. But, and, and he was shaking. But, but anyway, he knelt down, as you know, and I baptized him in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and then I helped him up, and we embraced, and he was just shaking violently, and I'm thinking, what have I done? This is a terrible idea, and he just thanked me profusely. We got the towels out, and we did our best to warm him up, and fortunately, it was Southern California, so there was like a heater outside. It's called the sun, <laughs> and I, I got away with one there because we, we really could have lost him. On the other hand, at least we'd know where he was going that moment. I'm not sure a lawyer would have agreed with that. But, but, you know, it is a question. The, what is to stop us from being baptized? What is it that stops us from really accepting a full measure 
of God's grace. And of course, we see here that it's not God who stops us. You know, the book of Acts, if I was an editor, I'd be telling Luke, this book makes no sense. You keep bringing in characters and taking them out and bringing in new ones, and I don't get any plot development, and I'm meeting Philip in here, and then he's going to disappear, and I'm not going to really see much of him. And I just got interested in Philip. But of course, the book of Acts is not about Peter or Paul or Philip or any of those guys. It is a biography of the Holy Spirit. So that we do have something consistent. And here is the Holy Spirit speaking through an angel to tell Philip, I need you to go down to that desert road, and I want you to talk to somebody there. And here is the Ethiopian eunuch. And, and evidently he understands the faith better than a lot of us. You know, in the book of Acts, Peter preaches, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, if I was running a club, I'd have a few, I'd have, I'd have higher standards. But this is God's club. And the standards are not as high as we demand. So it's not God preventing us from getting a full measure of grace, but it's us, not only for ourselves, but for others. You know, God doesn't go to the Breakfast Club in Indiana. I'm not talking about that old movie, The Breakfast Club, which I never saw because I had little kids, so I missed like a whole decade of movies and music. I don't know what happened in the 80s. What were you guys doing? Because I missed it. But the breakfast club I'm talking about is all the old guys that meet at the diner. Every one of them has two, three, four, or five bypasses, and they still order bacon and eggs. And it does not say in the book of Joel that everybody who has had a bypass and and stops eating bacon and eggs, will be saved. It doesn't say that there. You know, it doesn't say that if the pastor loses 100 pounds and gets closer to 200 from 300, then he can be saved. It doesn't say, and you fill in the blank for your besetting problem, the one you really struggle with. It doesn't say that you have to get your blood sugar down to an acceptable norm before you can be saved. So here we got somebody. The Ethiopian eunuch had gone all the way to Jerusalem to worship. We know that there were God's people in Africa at that time. There was a major synagogue in the, in the island of Elephantine, which was right on the Ethiopian border. And there are archaeological remnants of other ones and not only that, but by the time the 20th century rolled around, there was a whole culture of people that knew the Torah, knew God's law, and had been keeping it preserved for centuries. So we know it was out there. And this is a man who has a lot of good sense. He can, you know, I go through the bank line, and I have to tell them to check my math because I majored in the humanities. <laughs> he knows his business mathematically, but he's come up against a stone wall. He's reading a papyrus roll, which would be a very expensive item, by the way, of Isaiah. And he has gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he couldn't get closer than the outer court. Because as a sexual being, he wasn't part of the norm. The Ethiopian eunuch was not worthy of worshiping with God's people because he was not part of the sexual norm. And Philip is not given instruction by the Holy Spirit. Get this guy's act together physically. Make him like the rest of us before he can be saved. He's just told, and I don't know how he did it, run alongside that, that chariot. But he does. And the eunuch accepts this as normal. Philip says, do you know what you're reading? And he says, how is it possible if nobody, if not somebody guides me. And that's the word for guide because this word here is, is, is composed of the word for road and going. If somebody doesn't go along this road and show me which way I'm going, if somebody doesn't tell me where I turn, what's it about? It's about Jesus' suffering. It's about 
the fact that no matter where we go, Jesus has already been. That we don't serve a God up on a high Olympus who has never felt any of our pain or suffering or struggle, who has never had to ask, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from hearing my groans? And the eunuch asks a good question. Is the prophet talking about himself or somebody else? And Philip makes it clear. It's pointing to Jesus. And your suffering and your feelings of unworthiness and your struggle that you don't measure up or people have told you that members of your family don't measure up or some busybody has put up hoops for you to jump through or hurdles that get higher and higher. None of that matters. None of that's here. And when the Ethiopian hears this, he says, Behold water. What is stopping me from being baptized? And the answer is nothing. I don't write this stuff because I'd really rather that you meet my standards before you get baptized, that you understand Scripture exactly the way I do, or some board of the church, or some committee, or somebody else. But it's just kind of like that hymn, just as I am without one plea. You know, that's how we're called. Now, as we walk together, we strengthen each other, we support each other. But I may never get my blood sugar quite down to where it needs to be. You may never be able to resist bacon and eggs after your bypass. You may eat the icing and leave the cake or whatever it is that you do. And maybe the person in the next pew is never going to measure up to your standards. But the blessing here in this scripture is that God wants us so desperately that he's going to start with you the way you are. And then trust me, we will all be transformed. Who is outside our circle? What barriers have we put up? Let's just make the circle even wider and wider. Take a big step back from judgment and recognize that Jesus came to save everybody. And with your open hearts, you just might do it. Amen.